Hello, my friends. God bless all of you. So, we have spoken of the parable of the ten virgins. And just for you to have an idea of the greatness of this parable, just for you to have an idea, pay attention. The parable speaks of five wise virgins and five were foolish. Jesus called them foolish. The Bible says they're foolish. The five wise form part of the church of the Lord Jesus, the spiritual church of the Lord Jesus. The church where the head is the Lord Jesus and the body is formed by those who are sealed with the Holy Spirit, baptized with the Holy Spirit. This is the spiritual church, the church of the Lord Jesus, the true church of the Lord Jesus where he said, the gates of hell will not prevail against my church. This is the church. So you see, when a person destroys himself, abandons faith, it's because he was not part of the spiritual church. He was part of the institutional church. The institutional church is formed by churches, evangelical churches, those churches which are denominations of church A, B, and C, including the universal church. So that's the physical church, the physical, which works to bring people to the church, which is spiritual. Understand this well. So when we do these movements for people to receive the Holy Spirit, it's exactly for this. It's to take people out of the institutional church and bring them to the spiritual church because the spiritual church prevails. The institutional church, Jesus said, there'll be no stone left upon stone. So this is a point which we learn in the parable of the ten virgins. But the main point of the parable starts when Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven shall be like, look, the kingdom of heaven. So he is speaking of the main objective which guides the spiritual church. Those who form parts of the spiritual church have this understanding that the wise virgins would take extra oil in case of the bridegroom delaying. They had the oil to keep their fire alight. This fire represents the ba the oil rather represents the baptism with the Holy Spirit. The oil represents baptism with the Holy Spirit. Now, the foolish virgins, they were virgins. They were parts of the church, but not the spiritual church. They were parts of the institutional church. This is very strong. They were part of church A, B, C, D. Have you seen those people who say, Oh, I'm from my church, my church, my church. People adore more your church than the Lord Jesus. They need to adore the Lord Jesus. He is the head of the church. Those who form part of the spiritual church value the head, who is the Lord Jesus, who is the king of the kingdom of heaven. But those who are not born of God, not born of the Spirit, they are part of the institutional church. They can be faithful in the church. They can be a nice person. They might not live in sin. They might not live in sin. Because 
the virgin was supposedly holy. Only God saw the sin. And because of this, Jesus called them foolish. So I want you to know, my friend, for you to position yourself to see where you stand, whether in the spiritual church or the institutional church. Which church do you belong to? I belong to the church of my Lord Jesus. I belong to my Lord Jesus. But this is to think, to reason, and evaluate. Another point which we observe in the foolish virgins. Why were they foolish? Why did Jesus call them fools? Because he, Jesus, left the kingdom of heaven and came to this world to rescue, to marry, to marry with the brides who also leave this world, the kingdom of this world, to join with the king of the kingdom of heaven. So note that the foolish virgins, although they did not live in physical sin, at sight, they were virgins. But Jesus knew them. And what was their greatest sin? They wanted the kingdom of heaven. They went to meet the king of the kingdom of heaven. However, they were so occupied so occupied with the things of this world. They wanted to carry a bit of the kingdom of this world with them because they did not sacrifice to carry an extra jar or vase of oil. And this was their greatest sin because when the bridegroom arrived, the door was closed and they remained behind. Have you thought of this? Imagine a person who lives 20, 30, 50 years in faith, faithful in the church. But when Jesus comes, they remain behind. And why did they remain behind? But how? No one understands, yes, but Jesus knows the heart. He knows the minds and the hearts. So when a person remains, when a person remains, it's because they needed to remain behind. Jesus is not unjust. And in that moment, they said, Lord, Lord, open the door, Lord. He said, I do not know you. You did not marry me. I left the kingdom of my father, the kingdom of heaven, to come here to this filthy world to save your life. But you never surrendered your life to me. You surrendered your life to church, the institutional church, rather. And then, there is no marriage. It stays behind. God bless you all. And do not forget, I'd like to strengthen this idea. This coming Sunday, we will be in faith and in prayer, crying out for the people for the people who are empty, who have a huge hole within them. In all the universal churches of the kingdom of God and the planet, we are going to be in one faith and one spirit, fighting for those who are living empty each day. Help us by bringing a person who is feeling empty, all right? God bless you and until tomorrow, until tomorrow, in the name of the Lord Jesus, amen.